Mr. Larry, in honour of your service to this, this uh, association, this industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I've, um, I've got a, uh, some notes on the back of an, of an envelope, and uh, legend has it that uh, Abraham Lincoln wrote the uh, Gettysburg Address on the back of an envelope. Uh, <clears throat> mine will be a little bit briefer. The only real note here is don't forget to thank your wife. <laughs> but uh, let, let me start by uh, uh, thanking uh, uh, NOV Reed Heikelog. Uh, really for this award. Uh, this is a, a, a tremendous honor and I, I'm humbled to receive it. Uh, the, the list of past recipients is, is, is uh, incredible with, with pioneers in the industry um, and so I'm certainly humbled to be grouped with them. Certainly within Diamond Offshore, uh, Mo Plaisance was our most recent uh, recipient and I believe before that was uh, Bob Rose and probably going back to, to Ned Sims. Um, so e even uh, even there, that's uh, those are some tremendous people uh, that I'm uh, succeeding. Uh, Milton Friedman once said, uh, as an example, he would say, in explaining economics, he would say, "No one can make a pencil," and then he would go on how nobody possessed all the skills to produce paint, graphite, and all this other kind of stuff. And, and it uh, clearly occurs to me that that no one can uh, drill a well. And, and that's not just even the drilling contractor. The IDC encompasses so many uh, other disciplines from uh, service companies and from the operators and the governments and everybody required. So I, I take this award really uh, saying that no one can earn it, that it is, is something that, that reflects uh, not only your individual company but the entire industry. And so I'm very pleased uh, to accept it for, for that reason. Um, uh, th this is not my uh, first honor from the IDC. Uh, I was able to serve as chairman of the IDC, and uh, one of the things that they do every year is they take your picture and put it on the cover of the magazine. And I think they discontinued that, and circulation went up when they stopped uh, running it that way. But uh, during the year which I took over in 2003, uh, IDC had an initiative uh, to, to uh, promote Casual Day. And, uh, and to reflect that at the time people were more casual. And uh, so uh, you go into IDC's offices at the time and there was this huge parade of, of IDC chairmen going back into the founding of the 40s, all uh, middle-aged at, at the minimum, white guys that looked pretty staid in their Sunday best. And um, so I went out and took a photograph in a blue check shirt um, and then in 2004, they abandoned that and went back to. <laughs> <laughs> so I have my, my previous honor was the honor that I'm on that wall uh, in, in amongst all these staid uh, Sunday best guys, and I look like I'm going to a uh, square dance. <laughs> uh, but you know, to show that how how fleeting any of these honors are. The well, last time I talked to Lisa, I understood they packed all these pictures up and actually took them down. So uh, anyway, that uh, that goes on. In, in thanking, obviously, all the people that, that I work with at Diamond, that, that's very important. Uh, I would like to just single out one, and that's uh, my assistant, uh, Sandy Landry, uh, who's been first started working for me in 1982. And I assure you I wouldn't be here today without her efforts. Uh, in, in thanking uh, my wife, Marcella, here, um, uh, she goes back a little bit further. I met her in 1976, and we got married in, in 1980. Uh, in fact, I, I was I was working at Ernst and Young, and she she still works at Ernst and Young. And you weren't allowed to date at the time, and and uh, I didn't realize. I mean, that was just like your single guy's ideal dream. You you you, you couldn't date, therefore you couldn't get married, or whatever. And, and uh, so I got this incredible job opportunity to come to Diamond Offshore. And, I just embraced it. Thought that was great. And then I got married, so. <laughs> and and that has proved uh, not only a, a great a choice of career, but a great choice of a spouse. Um, uh, and I assure you, I would not be here without her. I would probably be one of those slackers sitting on a couch, um, you know, not not doing too much. And and the last thing I want to say is that. Uh, I'm proud to accept the title of Driller of the Year because my wife already has a title and I need a title to go with hers. And her her title came uh, was first awarded her back in 1995, 
And one Sunday morning, we're reading the paper, and she came across this article, and it was how to raise smart children. And she reads it, and she starts going, well, we're not doing any of these stuff. We're going to have idiots for kids. And, um, and our, our oldest son was like six at the time. And she, I said, give that to me. You know? and, and one of the items on there was, you're supposed to discuss current events with your, your kids. And I said, I do this all the time. And, you know, she said, of course, no, you don't do it. You don't do it right. And, and, and so I called my son in. I said, hey, Stephen, watch this. And, and I said, Stephen, who's president of the United States? And he knew it was Bill Clinton. I turned to her and she said, oh, everybody knows that. And I knew we had had a discussion. I thought, I thought I would get this. Who's vice president of the United States? And he says, Al Gore. And I turned to Marcel and I said, See, she's still kind of dismissive. And then I was reaching out on a limb. I, 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 I didn't know if he knew this, but early in 1995, the Republicans had just taken over Congress, and you couldn't turn on the TV without constantly seeing Newt Gingrich, who stepped into the leadership role in the, in the Republican Congress. So I turned to Stephen and I said, Stephen, who is Speaker of the House? And he looks back without missing a beat and says, Mommy. <laughs> So the Speaker of the House now is married to the Driller of the Year. Thank you, thank you very much.